اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم ائی سیک دا پروٹیکشن اف اللہ اگینسٹ دا ڈیول بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان دا نیم اف اللہ دی موسٹ بینیفیشنٹ اینڈ دی موسٹ مرسیفل رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امر و ہل لغت من لسانی یفقہ قولی او مائی لارڈ اوپن فار می مائی چیسٹ گرانٹ می دا سیلف کانفیڈنس کنٹینمنٹ اینڈ بولڈنس اینڈ میک لوز دی ناٹ فرام مائی ٹنگ دیٹ انڈرسٹینڈ مائی اسپیچ السلام علیکم می پیس بلیسنگز اینڈ مرسی آف اللہ بی اپون یو این ٹو آل دی میسنجرس آف اللہ اینڈ ان پرٹیکولر آن دی نوبل اینڈ دی فائنل میسنجر پروفٹ محمد پیس بی اپون ایم ہز فیملی اینڈ ہز کمپینینس ان دس ویڈیو وی ول بی کمپلیٹنگ دی سیکشن اے دی فاؤنڈیشنس آف انٹرنل آڈیٹنگ آف سی آئی اے پارٹ ون اسینشیلس آف انٹرنل آڈیٹنگ اٹ ہیز دی ویٹیج آف ففٹین پرسینٹ ان ایگزامس ٹائپس آف ریکمینڈیڈ گائیڈنس There are two types. Number one, implementation guidance and number two, the supplemental guidance. Implementation guidance. Implementation guidance assess the internal auditors in applying the standards. Implementation guidance collectively addresses the internal auditing's approach, methodologies and concentration but does not detail the processes or the procedures. Supplemental guidance. The supplemental guidance provides the detailed guidance for conducting internal audit activities. These include topical areas, sector specific issues, processes and the procedures, tools and the techniques, programs, step by step approaches and examples of deliverables. Purpose authority responsibility of the internal audit activity. The purpose authority and responsibility of the internal audit activity must be formally defined in an internal audit charter consistent with the mission of internal audit and the mandatory elements of the international professional practices framework the core principles for the professional practice of internal auditing the code of ethics the standards and the definition of internal auditing the chief audit executive must periodically review the internal audit charter and present it to the senior manager and the board for the approval internal audit charter the internal audit charter is a formal document that defines the internal audit activities purpose authority and responsibility the internal audit charter establishes the internal audit activities position within the organization including the nature of the chief audit executive's functional reporting relationship with the board authorizes access to records personnel and physical properties relevant to the performance of the engagements and defines the scope of internal audit activities final approval of the internal audit charter resides with the board the charter should be written by and periodically reviewed by the chief audit executive and approved by the senior management and the board or the audit committee sections in the internal audit charter there are seven sections the purpose and the mission it includes the mission of the internal auditing and the definition of internal auditing section 2 the standards for the professional practice of the internal auditing establishes that the internal audit activity will follow all the mandatory elements of the IPPF Furthermore, the chief audit executive must report periodically to the board about the internal audit activities conformance with the standards and the code of ethics. Section 3, authority establishes the dual reporting responsibility of the internal audit activity. Section 4, independence and objectivity It specifies that the internal audit activity must have the organizational independence and internal auditors maintain the objectivity. Section 5 The scope of the internal audit activities includes the provision of assurance and the consulting engagements. Section 6 Responsibility highlights the specific responsibilities of the chief audit executive. Section 7 Quality assurance and improvement program ensures that the internal auditors must perform engagements at an accepted level of quality and the excellence. characteristics of the internal audit charter the charter should establish the internal audit activities position within the organization 
including the nature of the chief audit executive's functional reporting relationship with the board, authorizes access to records, personnel, and the physical properties relevant to the performance of the engagements, define the scope of the internal audit activities. Assurance services. Assurance services are defined as an objective examination of evidence to provide an independent assessment on governance, risk management, and control processes for the organization. Some of the examples of the assurance engagements are risk and control assessments, audit of third parties and contract compliance, security and privacy audits, performance and the quality audits, key performance indicator audits, operational audits, financial audits, regulatory compliance audits. Parties involved in the assurance services. There are three parties involved in the assurance services. Number one, the person or the group directly involved with the entity, operation, function, process, system or other subject matter, that is the process owner. Number two, the person or group making the assessment, the internal auditor. And number three, the person or the group using the assessment, the user. Consulting services. Consulting services are defined as advisory and related client services, the nature and scope of which are agreed upon with the client and which are intended to add value and improve an organization's operations. In a consulting engagement, the auditor provides advice or makes a suggestion. The auditor does not need to be independent in a consulting engagement. Consulting services do not impair the objectivity of either the internal auditor or the internal audit activity. Furthermore, consultancy services can only be provided if it is specifically defined in the internal audit charter. Some of the examples of the consulting engagements are training, system design, system development, due diligence, privacy, benchmarking, internal control assessments, and the process mapping. Parties involved in the consulting services. Consulting services generally involves two parties. Number one, the person or the group offering the advice, the internal auditor, and the person or the group seeking and receiving the advice, the engagement client. Difference between the assurance and the consulting engagements. In an assurance engagement, the auditor provides an assessment and states an opinion about whether or not something within the company is operating or performing correctly. The auditor should be objective in the investigation and independent in the decision. In a consulting engagement, the auditor provides the advice or makes a suggestion. Code of Ethics The Code of Ethics states the principles and the expectations governing the behavior of individuals and organizations in the conduct of internal auditing. It describes the minimum requirements for conduct and behavioral expectations rather than the specific activities. Principles in the Code of Ethics Number 1. Integrity Number 2. Objectivity Number 3. Confidentiality and number four, competency. Rules of conduct related to the integrity. Internal auditors shall perform their work with honesty, diligence, and responsibility, shall observe the law and make disclosures expected by the law in the profession, shall not knowingly be a party to any illegal activity or engage in acts that are discreditable to the profession of the internal auditing or to the organization, shall respect and contribute to the legitimate and the ethical objectives of the organization. Rules of the conduct related to the objectivity. Internal auditors shall not participate in any activity or relationship that may impair or be presumed to impair their unbiased assessment. 
This participation includes those activities or relationships that may conflict with the interests of the organization. Shall not accept anything that may impair or be presumed to impair their professional judgment. Shall disclose all material facts known to them that if not disclosed may distort the reportings of activities under review. The internal auditor should maintain the objectivity and not assume the management responsibility when performing the consulting services. Rules of conduct related to the confidentiality. Internal auditors shall be prudent in the use and protection of information acquired in the course of their duties, shall not use the information for any personal gain or in any manner that would be contrary to the law or detrimental to the legitimate and ethical objectives of the organization. Rules of the conduct related to the competency. Internal auditors shall engage only in those services for which they have the necessary knowledge, skills and the experience. Shall perform internal auditing services following the international standards for the professional practice of internal auditing shall continually improve their proficiency and the effectiveness and the quality of their services. Here comes the end of the section A Foundations of Internal Auditing. Please attempt the 43 true false questions as provided in the CIA Part 1 Essentials of Internal Auditing 2022 study book. Now you can practice the 60 MCQs from the CIA Part 1 test being questions of the 2022. CIA Part 1 Essentials of Internal Auditing 2022 study book and the CIA Part 1 test bank questions of the 2022 are available for subscription from my website zenacademy.us or the mzen.org. Please do like the video, share it and subscribe the channel for amazing contents. May Allah, Lord of the heavens and the earth bless you in this world and in particular in life hereafter. Amen. Have a nice day. Take care. Allah Hafiz.